All right, what is up everyone? Hope you're all doing well and welcome to part two of this vlog series project, whatever you want to call it. I'm just trying to figure out how can I get a bit of a more organic and a better drum sound. It's a different drum sound from what I've had up until this point, which has been pretty low tune, punchy, that kind of sound. I've had it for so long, it's been a pretty processed sound and I'm looking for a different vibe this time around. So if you haven't seen part one already, in that part I, I scaled down my kit a lot and you know spent some time setting things up more ergonomically and just figuring things out. If you haven't seen that already, I'll leave a link to it right here so you can check that out. I will also mention before we get started with putting mics on here that in part one, I mentioned I'm waiting for new drum heads. So I was thinking put mics on first because you know the drum heads were gonna come in a couple of days later this week. And once those come in, I'll make a video about tuning and we'll finalize everything there. Thing is, I got a message yesterday, my drum, the, like, a few of the heads I, ordered, I was ordering were out of stock, so that's gonna take I don't know how long until they show up. So what I'm trying to say is I won't make a video about tuning and, st and stuff like that. This time around, we will, f we will finish this project with the heads that I have on the kit currently. And once the new heads come in in the future, I don't know, in a week or two or whatever, whenever they show up, uh, I'll make a proper video about that separate from this project. So with that said, let's get started. I have already prepped the drums since I, I'm, I w I'm not going to get the new heads this time around. I have tuned the drums up a bit. They are much more high, much higher, more open tuned now than they were before. Uh, again, I will make a video about tuning at some other point. I've also taken out all the mic cables out of my audio interface and I've reset all the gain levels. So we're pretty much starting from scratch here. New sound, nothing prepped on the interface or anything. We're just going to start from scratch. What I want to try today is I want to experiment a lot and that's something very important with setting up mics and recording and mixing and all of that is you have to experiment a lot. So for the longest time, pretty much always, I've used the spaced pair configuration with overheads, meaning I've had you know two overheads, one on the right side, one on the left side, equidistant from the center of the snare, just to capture all the symbols and everything. They, they've primarily been kind of symbol mics for me because I've had 15 mics in total running on the kit recently. So I've had a lot of, you know, control of each part of the kit. So those were more like cymbal mics. This time around, I do want to try to use fewer microphones. I'm not setting a, a limit to myself here, but I do generally want to try to use a bit fewer microphones to try to achieve something more organic. And part of that is definitely has to do with the overhead. So this time I want to try something called the recorder man technique, which is something I've never tried before. And uh, I think it can yield the result that I'm looking for. I don't really know what to expect, how this is gonna work out. I'm gonna try it and we'll see what happens. So that's the first step. We're gonna set up the microphones. I'm gonna try to figure out the whole recorder man technique thing. And bear with me, because this is my first time attempting this. We're gonna see how it, how it works out and see how it sounds. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are with the two overheads I'm using. This is a pair of Shure KSM 137s. They're both the same. What I'm trying to achieve here with, again, it's called something called the recorder man technique is I'm going to have this mic basically point straight down at the snare head, like the center of the snare, right where I hit it. And this other one is going to basically be kind of over my shoulder, also pointing directly at the snare head. The tricky part, I mean, that's, you can set that up and that's easy. The tricky part is I also want these to be, I want them to be equidistant from the snare head. So the same distance between here as between here but I also want them to be equidistant from the bass drum head where the beater strikes. So I have to measure to make sure it's the same distance from here to here, and it's also the same distance from down, sorry, from down there to there as to there. So the, the measuring process is gonna be a little bit tricky. I've only set them up like this, this is probably not even close. So I have a cable here. What I'm basically gonna do is I'm gonna sit down and I'm going to pinch the end of this this cable to the bass drum head and try to just hold it down firmly. And I will also say the recorder man technique as it's supposed to be, or as it was originally invented, was only about two drumsticks height away, you see, which is something like that, which is like really close, especially when you get to this one, which is basically gonna be right up over your shoulder. Uh, they wanted to, when they discovered this technique, they wanted to have a very, very tight, like really close kind of drum sound. I'm not necessarily after that, so I might pull them a bit further away. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start measuring here and we'll just kinda see what I can achieve. There we have it, finally. Okay, so that was a real pain in the ass to do on your own. 
this should be pretty good. They're very mer like they're pretty much exactly the same distance. I'm gonna have to check this angle though to see if it's pointing. I mean, it's it's pointing a little bit off axis. Like it's not directly at the snare. It's more like right like a cross section which might not be a bad thing at all I'm just gonna leave it like this I won't bother getting, getting it like exact because I don't even know if it's gonna sound good so let me record something proper uh, and uh, this and I'll get you guys hear what these two are sounding like and I'll listen to it myself for the first time as well I don't really know how this is gonna turn out hopefully it's gonna be a pretty good balance see I, the idea behind this is since you're equidistant from both the snare and the kick once you start panning these uh, in the mix later, you'll still have a very, very solid kick and snare right down the center because they're both exactly in phase. That's the idea, and based on that, you can then add you know, extra microphones to fill in if you, if you need a little bit more volume on the kick or a bit more presence in the toms or use some acoustic, like some room reverb or something. Um, so this will hopefully be a pretty good uh, foundation to build off of. So I will record something, I'll let you guys hear it, and this is going to be no, you know, no mixing, no nothing, 100% raw signal, and uh, hopefully it's going to sound pretty good. So let's see how it sounds. pretty blown away by how good just those two mics alone sounded. I didn't get near that kind of sound when putting these same two mics in a, in a space pair configuration. You don't get as much of that entire kind of nice complete picture of the of the entire drum set. It's more focused on cymbals when, when placing them that way. So this def definitely accentuates the, the kit as a whole much more. There are still a few things I, I want to adjust about this sound. Again, this was, I mean, unmixed in mono and everything. So mix-wise, there's some stuff later. But in terms of microphones, I'm gonna want, I'm gonna put spot mics on everything. So close mics, I'm gonna have uh, one on each tom, uh, top and bottom of the snare. I won't do a hi hat mic. I didn't, I didn't feel like that was needed. I won't do a right mic either, like I had before. Um, so close mics on all the drums. I'm also gonna put uh, two mics on the kick. I used to have three before, so I'm just gonna do two now. An Audix D6, maybe like halfway in through the drum for the the attack and smack and a sub kick at the front head for that really low frequency. Also, one mic out in the hallway, because I usually want to have that. It has a really nice sound to it actually out in the hallway, and this room doesn't have a very flattering sound, so I don't really want to have a room mic in here necessarily. I prefer having one out in the hallway. Um, so there are going to be a bunch more microphones, but the thing is, I'm going to put them up, and this is still less than I had before. Again, no hi-hat mic, no right mic. There's one tom fewer than before, and I'm not going to do uh, three mics on the kick. I might incorporate a core mic or, or the core mic position, or whatever. Something I used to do in the past. Basically, I put a mic right here to kind of catch like the the center, like again like, the core sound of the drum kit, like really smack and and punch it, compress the hell out of it. it sounds really cool. Um, I might, I, I think I'm actually gonna put that there too. So just gonna be a fair bit of uh, of microphones on here. But again, when it comes to mixing and really you know dialing the final dial, dialing in the final sound. I might not even use all the microphones in the mix. And in that case, if I notice, oh, well, I don't need the core mic. Oh, I only need one mic on the kick. I don't need the snare top, whatever. I'll just take it away, you know, remove it afterward. But for, for now, I'm gonna start with that. So um, let me put all of those mics on the kit and connect everything. It's gonna take a little while, but you'll see it go like this. And uh, after that, we'll hear how all of that sounds. And then I'll move on to what will become the next video, which is mixing and just kind of getting the final sound. So let me put all of that in place and we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so now I've got all the microphones in place and I'm just gonna walk you guys through what they are and my reasoning for their positioning. So let's start right here with the bass drum. I am using the uh, Solomon Low Freak Subkick. 
uh, right here in front, it is just like half an inch or something away from the head. Basically as close as I can get it to the head without it touching when I play the drum. Uh, halfway in between the uh, kickboard and the top, like the rim. This is where I've noticed, for, for me at least, this is where it sounds the best. And then I have the Audis, Audix uh, D6 on the inside. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's basically like almost half the way into the drum pointing straight towards the beater. The uh, record man technique with the overheads, they pick up a really nice kind of all around sound. So I want these to accentuate the extremes, basically. The, the, I can adjust the click with that one and I can adjust the really rich low frequencies with, with the sub kick. Also playing a part in the kick sound is the Samson C01, which is a very inexpensive uh, condenser microphone, the same as I use out in the hallway. The door is closed, so you can't see it, but it's the same microphone. Uh, I know you're not supposed to use condensers necessarily this close to drums, but it actually, this one actually does the job pretty well. It's, it's what I've got for now to do this job. So this is uh, this acts like a core mic. You can see it's basically right in the middle of you know the rack tom, floor tom, and and snare and kick. So it's right in the center to pick up the core of the of the kit. But the main thing it does pick up because it's facing downwards the main thing it does pick up is the kick so this adds a kind of a um, mid-rangey kind of punch factor and you compress the hell out of this and it gives it a really cool vibe so this will have definitely have a big part in the, the kick sound as well if i end up using it in the mix I'm, I'll, i've put it here for now i'm gonna try it we'll see if it's necessary or not i might end up removing it but for now you know it's it's there for the snare drum i'm using audix i5s top and bottom and uh the, the positioning here is basically pretty much right outside the rim and you can see it's not necessarily pointing down towards the center. I kind of noticed that for some reason uh, this snare especially sounds really good when I point the mic kind of over it a little bit. Um, and it's, you know, it's like three fingers is what I can fit in there. And um, yeah, pretty standard positioning maybe aside from the fact that it's pointing a little bit over the snare drum, not necessarily so much downwards. Uh, the bottom mic is essentially a mirror image of that almost. It's a little further away. And if we go around this this side, you can see this top mic, I tried to keep as close to the rack, I mean, not super close, but pretty a little bit closer towards the rack tom side because I don't want the hi-hats to bleed into it too much. And on the other, on the bottom here, I've actually, this one is a little bit closer to the hi-hats instead because hi-hats are not really an issue with this distance. Instead, the bass drum is an issue, so I want to get away from that a little bit. So they're all, you can see, they're almost mirror images of one another, just, you know, off to one and one side or the other a little bit as for the overheads we already talked about those but again these are sure ksm 137s and what we have left is then the uh the tom mic so i'm using an audix d2 audix d4 and audix d6 on these three toms and what i've tried this time i'm gonna see how this sounds it's a little bit a little bit of an experiment is i try to to keep them pretty far from the drum you can see i can fit my entire hand in between here generally i would have them a lot closer because before with the older setup i had or with the old setup i had i used to have my cymbals a lot lower and everything was more tight and condensed so uh you know i had to kind of bring the mics down as well really close to the drum because if i had them too far high up they would just pick up a ton of cymbal bleed especially down here with the floor tom mics i had a stack here the china and crash was right here a lot lower but now that there's so much space here all of a sudden um i could actually afford getting some real like you could there's some real distance in between here um the reason for this is i believe when you get away from the drum a little bit like that it kind of lets the sound waves you know develop a little bit before they hit the mic so you get a little bit more of a natural sound because we as humans we're not used to putting our ear right next you know two inches away from a drum head we're used to listening to it from a distance so the same principle applies here where hopefully i haven't tried this before but from what i've learned this is supposed to give a little bit more of a developed and like organic kind of sound we will see what happens but uh that's the way i've ended up positioning these for now so all around I'm using 11 microphones now, down from 15, so it's an improvement. Still, still a ton of microphones, I know, but um, I kind of like. I kind of like that. I mean, I could get away with the two microphones that we we heard before. You know, these two, they sounded great. I, I could use that, but I, I enjoy the process of trying to get a really really solid drum sound, and more than two microphones is a part of that for me. So, all of this has come together really really nicely. I am going to uh, play it a little bit for you guys so you can hear exactly what it sounds like right now, unmixed. And uh, yeah, let's have a listen.
Okay, so here's the deal. I might just be biased because I've, I've been so tired of the old drum sound I had, and I'm just I'm I've really been looking for something new. I, so I might just be biased, but holy shit, does this sound much better than the drum sound I had before? This actually sounds really good. I'm pretty blown away by how good that sounded, and it's it's not mixed at all. It's in mono. Like there's no no EQ, no compression. No nothing. Just I just balanced the volumes. I ga- I did some gain staging, uh, you know, to make sure everything's balanced. And I balanced volumes inside the project to just, you know, for for the playback. That's it. It sounds amazing. I'm so freaking happy I did this. So I am. I I. If you can't tell, I am beyond stoked for this. This sounds really really good. Um, I am going to spend a day or so now listening closer to this to what I've recorded messing a little bit with the mix i'm not gonna make any drastic mix changes i mean i mean i don't think i will at least because it sounds so good already i will however you know go in and see what can i tidy up here what can i make more more clear and more you know just pronounced and just more like even more like what i want it to be uh but i will try to keep a little bit of a less is more approach as i have with everything so far compared again relative to what what i used to have my drum sound like So let me spend a day or so on that, and then I'll get back with the final part, part three of this series, where I will kind of explain to you guys my steps with mixing, in the order in which I I like to do things, the choices I made with mixing for this sound, which probably, you know, it will probably change later down the road. What you guys will hear in tomorrow's video definitely won't be the final, final result, but it will be a good step along the way. So I want to show you guys that part of the process. So I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully, I will have gotten these drums to sound even better. Hopefully, not worse. Um, and we'll have a look at all of that, and I'll tidy up some stuff here. I have a mess of cables behind me, which I will tie together neatly. So, less talking, more ending the video. See you guys tomorrow. Take care, and uh, yeah, have a good one.